There's a strong gradient up there. I want to go feel it and see what happens. Satisfy my own curiosities. And I figured I'd turn the camera on and take it with me. Ooh, what a hairy ride that was. My wing is, oh, motor out. Gotta land this one. <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker. So I hear the argument far too often that I need um, some big honking damn engine and you're 150 pounds soaking wet. I've heard the excuse that I need a bigger engine so that I can get out of a tight spot. Well, you fucked up by picking that spot because if you picked a spot that you need an engine to get out of safely, well, my friend, the mistake was made before you even put your stuff on. That argument is null and void from now on. So don't say it again that you need more thrust so you can get out of a tight spot because you're doing it wrong, my friend, and I ain't afraid to tell you. Sorry if it hurts your feelings. You can make a mean fucking comment down below. I accept all takers and commenters and jack holes and jack golfers, whatever you are, whatever you are. You pick a place that even if your climb rate suffers or your engine goes out, you can spiral and get up out of there and, and you need to pick your flight path before you even launch. That was the main point of that story. I wanted to say it and record myself saying it so I can share it with the masses, like the rest of the dumb shit that I talk about. But that's important shit. I wanted to say that where everybody could hear me. Where was Kurt Velvet at the, they say hi y'all. Hi. Thumbnail. Good morning, YouTube. How y'all doing out there? Everything was weird this morning. We were showing all the weather models were like 8, 10, 12 out of the south. Lake wind advisory in effect for today. Definitely strong winds aloft. We can see them moving. All the indicators are that it's strong. But the ground, it wasn't doing this till just now. I just put the camera on. It's safe to fly below treetop level at least because we have observation powers that let us see what's going on at those altitudes. So I'm going to go check it out and see what's what. We were maybe going to do first flight attempt today with Mr. Randy. But for now, I'm going to go see what's what. There's a strong gradient up there. I want to go feel it and see what happens. Satisfy my own curiosities. And I figured I'd turn the camera camera on and take it with me so I can make another shitty video. Let's see, I'm primed, clipped in. Microphone probably not working. Trim's adjusted slow. I'm gonna let those back out to the gray mark. Tip steer good, brakes are clear. The toggles have magnets on both sides, so no matter how you have them, they go back on pretty neat. All right, let's warm her up, let's see what we're dealing with. That was an accident. <laughs> I meant to say clear. <laughs> My priming stroke started the engine by accident. That's hilarious. Warm it up nice and slowly while I'm getting everything in my hands. Oh. There we go. Something is just weird here. I got the correct A there. Oh, there's a damn line over. I think I see it now. Hold on. Yeah, it's hooked behind the rib there. You see that? That was it. It was just, it was just that uh, cascade was on top. I knew something felt weird as shit. Now I'm where I'm aiming. Okay, this feels proper. All right, let's warm it up one more time. One, two, three, go. the turbulence we're gonna give ourselves a little more room as bad as i hate to interrupt this very entertaining video i need to interject something in here what i mean by give us a little room is when you have a strong wind gradient you always want to climb into the strong wind because if the wind hits the front of your wing it's going to push it back but if that strong wind hits the tail of your wing, it gonna throw it out in front of you. And that's where you take big, massive, scary collapses. If you go through a sharp gradient from behind, that's where you take your licks. So if you know what the wind's doing, always go in and out of the gradient area into the strongest wind. That'll keep you alive if it happens low. What I'm doing is I'm turning downwind while I've got good non-turbulent air, minor turbulent air. That way I don't continue climbing and turn downwind to keep my bell out and risk taking a lick from the back. Still enough room to bail out, and then I'm gonna push my big climb and feel the gradient. Much better to take licks on the front of the wing than from the back of the wing in strong winds. We're slowing down for sure. Very, very slow going at this altitude. Yeah, we're cooking. 
cooking. How much fuel do I got in this thing? Ah, there's enough. At this point, I decide the gradient is safe for the students, but it gets worse. While I'm gliding down, I'm going to go ahead and play with this Mac Para Charger 2. I just got it. There's another video, I think, about it. There's bumps. Let's do a weight shift only turn. Oh no, let's throw a little tip steer on it here. Ooh, so nice. Oh, the tip steers are on bungees too. Offers a little fake resistance. <laughs> try trim slow. Let's try trim slow. I ain't flown this one slow yet. And of course it goes to zero wind. Speed! You gotta have speed. Don't hit the windsock, cow. It's it good to fly. I mean, the gradient's pretty smooth. OCD kicks in. How about that? Is that good content? I think I can spin it around and after I edit it. I never talked to it upside down before. This feels awkward. Everything feels awkward. Talking to my helmet. <laughs> what kind of shit is this? Huh? Thank you for coming along. We're going to watch the wind blow for a minute and then probably go to insane conditions any, any second now. Amy, pushing with your hands. The whole time you were pushing left and the wing was going left. At the, at the pulley. At the pulley, wherever the pulley's at. If the wing is way back behind you and falling down, you got to move your hand further back with it to let it come back up. Some strongest gust coming through the town. So what should I fly? What should I fly? Golly, that's a tough question. Always a tough question. And Uni 23. Or no, wait, the Solo 21. Where's that one at? Solo 21, right here. I like that Solo. It's a good one. Sometimes... I select a wing because it's in a stuff bag and, uh, and I don't have to fold it back up when I'm done. I could just restuff bag it. I should probably give the radar a quick check just because it might be raining somewhere nearby. Yeah, there's some rain nearby for sure. But it looks pretty light. And actually rain to the west of us means we're going to have shade, which takes some of that thermal energy out. Yeah, we're right on the edge of that developed area. Should be nice and bumpy as shit. I'm down. Maybe I turn on some music. Oftentimes I have fun with the music. How about play? There it is. Put my phone in there so I can stop later on the way home and get it out of the paramotor out of the trailer. Yep. Yep. Pretty sure that'll happen. You know, when it comes right down to kiting practice, I like to kite wearing a cranked paramotor. It's really what you're doing. You're flying the wing, the motor just there to push you, but if you're wearing it and it's running, you can take a push anytime you want. The drawback being you got to stand here with this heavy thing on when you're not. So there's that. Hey, would somebody bring me a zipper tie and a clipper? I've got a rat tail hanging out. That's a safety hazard. My little pouch came loose. Get the, get the little sharp piece. Get all the way down flush with it before you snip it there. Yeah, that keeps it from scratching shit. Thank y'all. I seen that on my pre-flight. Needed to address it. This one's still good here. All right then. Safety first, yo. Now, what's coming? Ew, a bunch of garbage you win. Yay. Clear. Now, back to what I was saying. I'm just kiting here. I'm just kiting. I'm going to build a wall. Or maybe I do a whole inflation from this. It's going to go to my right. So, and a little check. Bring it back in front of me. Turn. Power. Oh, it's getting soft. Need some speed. Speed, speed, speed. Lean back. Woo! Over the mud hole I go. Up into the strong winds. There it is. Okay, I see the rain falling over there to the right, to the west. Pretty much nasty town as far as turbulence. This would not be comfortable to a newer pilot, I'm sure of it. If you watch my knees in the bottom of the frame, you could really see the turbulence. If there was no turbulence, my knees would be stable as I'm balanced on this thing. But every time you see them jostle, that's turbulence that I'm experiencing. So I'm gonna look. I'm at an airport, I still need to check. Even if I'm only full flying in this weather. All right, so I feel the turbulence. There it is. You see how it moves me around? 
And I'm controlling a little bit there. Oh yeah. Need to keep the motor alive too. I don't need to. I could certainly land this thing without it being on speed. No matter how hard you get dumped, you gotta stay fast. Resist pulling the brakes. Unless you're actually getting a surge, try to avoid pulling the brakes and just pay attention to what your glider's doing. I'm just warming my motor up right here right now and it looks like I'm gonna hit a low here. I'm deep in the brakes. I'm gonna raise them up and be fast. And when I'm fast and I come into the ground, I can flare nice and easy and get lifted and don't <laughs> Yeah. And then go off the hill, taxi down the hill, run, 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 run. That's it. The garbage, garbage air. But that's kiting. You just got to kite the wing and use the motor. If you do that, you'll win at this. I'm just climbing now, always keeping my bell out. I'm looking ahead. Be landing right over there by those lights. So I'm gonna give myself a little room. I got a little bigger spot here. I'm climbing. As I'm climbing, that, that bell out is forever expanding. And you're gaining yourself more altitude, more time, more options. You got more options. As I'm approaching into the field here, I'm making sure I got plenty of altitude. And now I'm going to give myself some more by turning left. Still full power. Still got the bell out to my right. I don't want to get on the other side of the field because the winds are predominantly out of the east today. Southeast pretty hard. Going to Bump Town. There's some birds out there. All right. It's not, but I'm fast. I'll cut through the turbulence a lot better. If I'm slow and then I hit some massive sink or a rotor, I'm more likely to take a collapse than if I'm weight shifting and my wing is oh motor out gotta land this one <laughs> all right so I'm just gonna stay fast emergency landing emergency landing caution everyone below but I'm fast so it's gonna make a nice easy landing here <laughs> yeah that works I let my motor idle too long it died on me but I was too low to restart and it's turbulent air so yeah, not bad. I even put it right by the truck, but I'm gonna crank it up and keep going. Okay, I got some wind. Get my wall built. Oh shit, there it goes again. I guess I need to work on it. I guess if it's gonna keep dying, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna raise the idle a little bit. Uh, maybe that'll help. Oh, I mean, I, I can do it. I just, not while I'm clipped in though. <laughs> I'll be right back, Wayne. This is what the paramotor lifestyle is really about. Always fucking with shit. Uh, at least I get to put my scissors back in my toolbox, I guess. Uh, I think I need a screwdriver. Pretty sure it'd be a flathead, though. Thing yeah, they hide it. They probably hid it on the very back bottom. Yeah, they sure as fuck did. Stupid. Why I gotta make shit stupid? Why can't they put the shit where it's easy to get to? Gotta be a fucking rocket scientist to do this right. I gotta take their box off to do a damn adjustment. How ridiculous is that? What y'all doing, Vitorizer? Help me. Help me, please. Actually, if I uh, lean that low screw just a little. I'm going to try leaning the low screw instead. That might help. Let's get this thing back on. It's important when you're putting this uh, boot band back on that you don't ever over-tighten it. That could cause uh, damage to the boot and then the premature ejection. Then you have to rely on your safety tether. Make sure you have one of those too. But when you get that thing tight enough that you can't slide it with, I can slide it with my fingers, I'm gonna give it a quarter turn. Now I can't. That's tight. That's as tight as you ever need to put that thing. So people who really wrench down on them have a crack start right around that damn band. And I've seen it and I know exactly what it is. They kept turning. You can turn that screw about three more times <laughs> before you get worried. But that's too much. That takes too much out of it. Oh, let's see here. We'll put it on before I crank it because I don't want to cut my hands off. That's how you cut your hands off is starting it on the ground. Let's see what my quarter uh, micro adjustment turn did here. I didn't turn it a quarter. I turned it like a blade width. Clip. Actually seems okay. It does. Strong gust. Feel that. Ooh. Ooh, nice gust. Man, it's amazing what a tiny little adjustment can do to a paramotor. Such a minor thing. So since I've worked on it, this is officially a test flight. The way I treat every flight on a paramotor, or any aircraft for that matter. I don't trust them. Last time I was in a certified airplane, the thing uh, sprouted a leak and we lost all the oil and had to do emergency landing an airplane. But we were in a good spot for it. The scary part was we, previous to that, we were not in a great spot. We had some options and we were discussing it actually when we realized the oil pressure was completely gone. Cobra launch? Let's do a Cobra launch. 
and I have enough wind for it. Now, nah, pretty mild wind. Use a little help from the motor. I caught some strings. Come on out, come on out. Ha ah, ha, there we go. Settling back down again. Woo! Damn! Get out of here with that bullshit. Fucking hey. Almost wiped out because of the weather. <laughs> Woo! Collapse? Maybe. Clearly things have changed. <laughs> Maybe a gust front, downdraft, something like that. Oh yeah, I'm getting smoked. This is ugly. I'm going back. Can I make it back? I hope so. We're gonna find out. I'm going with the wind and I'm in a relatively okay place. So, uh, yeah, but we done with that. There's our wind direction. Mark, you probably don't want none of it. I don't want none of it. Woo, what a hairy ride that was. Some days I like to ride a rodeo. Some days I don't. Today I don't. I fix my motor, that makes me feel good. And of course I'm talking something about uh, Mike failed. Much love. Kyle out. Subscribe for more thumbs up videos. See y'all later in the next one. I'm trying to listen and talk and it never works. It never fucking works. I suck at it. I need more thrust. Yeah. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta squeeze it. Yeah. When, but you use the power to your advantage. Whether it's a little bit of power, a lot of power. You gotta use that to your advantage. So I'm gonna put this thing up and uh, continue to do the stuff that I do. What a terrible uh, ordeal that was trying to launch in this wind. And it was because I had a weak engine. The thermals were slapping me down over and over and over again. I skipped on the ground a bunch of times, taking off, talking about, whoa, well, what's happening? You know, wind socks taking six feet dips fast. And so you fly through that, you take a six foot dip fast. If your wind sock is stretching out and it goes whew, like that, that means when you fly through that, you're gonna come down just as far as that windsock drop when you fly through that. And if you're three feet off the ground and you think you got it made, and that shit happens within your three feet into the ground and you take the whole load there for a moment until the wind picks back up, then you regain that lift and you have to control your pitch through all these things. That's why flying these conditions is intermediate at least, depending on the strength of the condition. Strong conditions require advanced experience levels. That's just a note on how to read these things, what to do. I hope you fly safe. hope you enjoyed the video content. Much love, guys. Call out. I don't want none of it. Woo! What a hairy ride that was.